Mr. Kayugumi is one of great historians who tells us more about Tabora. Here is a story. My name is Claveri Kayugumi, an assistant lecturer in history department, in the history unit. Uh, starting with the history of Tabora, Tabora history can be traced as far back in the 1830s when Arab traders arrived in Unyanyembe and they opened a trading center named Kaze. Kaze, as a small trading center, emerged to connect the trading route from the coast to Ujiji and beyond. That is in Manyema and uh, in eastern Congo. At the same time, Kaze was joining Karagwe, Buganda, and Bunyoro Kitara. So slowly, the trading post of Kaze under the Arabs emerged and later only transformed into Tabora. Maybe we have to trace a little bit the history of the name Tabora itself. When the Arabs were at Tabora here, caravans were coming and getting supplies from this trading center. They were getting food, they were getting merchandise or trade goods from the Arabs. And they usually food which was taken from this place, it was a sweet potato. This boiled and later dried sweet potato, commonly known as Matoborwa. So it was from this Matoborwa as food, the area came to be known as Tabora. So this is at least the brief history of the name Tabora as the region or as a place here in Unyamwezi. But originally it was Kaze under the Arabs. But later on, when it expanded, it was called Tabora because of the influence of Matoborwa. The Nyamwezi, who are the original people of this place, had their own culture. They were agriculturists, economic, economically. They were also traders. Uh, and the name Wanyamwezi, it was named or it was due from their first appearance in the coast. When they arrived at the coast, when the people asked them, they said, we are coming from Munyamwezi, the area where the moon rises. So that's when the Nyamwezi came to be known as Wanyamwezi. Their culture, it is a mixture of different cultures. For example, now we have the Swahili and the Arab culture due to the influence of the Arab traders. But at the same time, there was influence of some people from outside. For example, the Tusi, the Chues. The Chues were people who arrived in central Tanganyika or central Tanzania from western part. After arriving here, they came with their culture. Eh? So from there, in Nyamwezi, or among the Nyamwezi today, we have a variety of culture. A traditional culture, the Swahili culture, even the Christianity. Eh? So we can say there is no, what we can say, this is a true culture of the Nyamwezi today, but a mixture of various culture. They have their own styles, for example, as I have noted, they were agriculturists. They were engaging in agriculture. The Nyamwez were engaging in trade, prominent traders, porters, eh, who were taking goods from this place to the coast, taking salt to Karagwe as far as Buganda. Eh, but also they were porters. They were hunters. They were hunting elephants, taking the tusks, the ivory, to the coast. Eh. So they had their own traditional culture. Maybe we start with politics. Yes. Nyamwezi, or the Nyamwezi area, it was a center of political organizations. For example, we have the Nyamwezi kingdom. We have the Ulambo kingdom. All these were this particular area. 
we have prominent kings here eh? for example chief fundikira chief isike all of this were organizing people forming states these states became social and a political organization which directed people to engage in different activities to engage in different activities even in the post colonial period we have seen that unyamwezi is a center of prominent politicians for example chief abdara fundikira eh, is coming from here we have for example the ibrahim ripumba they are from unyamwezi from tabora so we can see how politically this area is rich but when you talk of education education tabora had schools and they are still there they were built by the british for example the, the tabora schools tabora girls and the tabora boys they were built, they were built in 1920s so educationally schools were there and they are there however these schools were launched with the aim of educating sons of chiefs that's why we see people like Mori Munyanere, they came here and they studied here but the common people the normal people many of them did not attend these schools not attend these schools and generally we can say education wise tabora is not so much advanced not so much advanced because we see that many of the people many of the young men were engaging in the trade many of the young men were engaging in agricultural production and hunting traditionally and historically so the effect of history as we have said the arabs who were prominent traders could not invest so much in education they invested in business until the coming of the british who opened these schools but currently we thank god that schools have been opened and also colleges for example the mukta college is doing well at least to promote education in this particular region as i have noted the founder of this town were arabs and the major concern of the arabs it was business trade they could not engage so much in education issues what they did they introduced a little bit of madrasa for their uh, islamic religion but formal education could not uh, be sprung or sprung up during the arab uh, period when we talk of the germans when the germans arrived here they took the western part of Tanganyika that is here in Tabora, Rukwa, Kigoma as reserve areas where they were taking laborers to productive areas for example in the Morogoro, Tanga and the, the coastal areas so this was like a neglected area special for recruiting laborers to work in the productive areas so from colonial period we see the germans could not so much uh, work hard on improving the education status of this region we see a little bit the british the british who introduced the tabora girls and the tabora boys however the intention of these schools it was for the sons and the daughters of the chiefs the common people we are not so much involved in getting education in these schools. So we can see the issue of education in this area, it was due to the colonial interest. It was a reserve area and then not the area to be developed in the social, cultural and the economic aspects.